In 2003, the Labour government introduced the antisocial behaviour legislation that completely changed the way children play. We were no longer seen as children playing, but now a youth nuisance causing antisocial behaviour everywhere we went. We wanted to discover what's changed. So here we are at the Maypole Centre, where we are making this film about antisocial behaviour. From here we asked certain important people on the estate what they thought antisocial behaviour was. I believe antisocial behaviour is, is when there's a big breakdown between um, people, maybe children and adults, and uh, a lot of arguing goes on. And so behaviour is the actions that other people take to affect uh, other people's quality of life. Shouting, screaming, uh, annoying. That's where I think antisocial behaviour is. I think that antisocial behaviour is it's harassment, alarm and distress to from a person or a group of people to another who live on the estate. Smiles in his back, so you've got to watch his smile. <laughs> this is the damage from people pulling down the plasterboards. Also, there's damage being caused to the electrical box up there. And if you come through here, what surprises have we got today? More plasterboards being pulled down. Um, yeah. We've got some graffiti. The lighting isn't really too good. Yes, the lights up here get kicked off frequently. It's quite easy to get attacked on the stairs here. Uh, it's been known for people to do drugs on the stairs, drink. Um, that's about the good one. I think that the children on this day, some do mean to be antisocial, but some do not. I don't think that they're aware of um, what antisocial behaviour is. There are many different forms of antisocial behaviour, some minor and some more serious. I don't think that you know, children are aware of what they're actually doing. What is your opinion about antisocial behaviour on the estate? One, not at all, or ten, very bad. Well, if I had to write my opinion of antisocial behaviour on the estate, I'd say nine, which is very bad. Well, I'd rate the um, antisocial behaviour on the estate at a nine or a ten, because it's very bad. makes the children antisocial? Well, I think it's because they're with the friends that feel they need to show off in front of the mates who makes them antisocial. 
Do you think children are involved in antisocial behaviour because the way their parents have brought them up? Well, I would say no, because really, it's just the estate. Oh, come on, come on, come on. What? Can we have our ball, please? Can't you get another one? Oh, I'm going to get just this once, and then it's popped. is when children run around the streets at night causing trouble and vandalising. Um, I think antisocial, antisocial behaviour means when children are like being destructive and disturbing their elders and just being abusive. I would like to resolve the levels of antisocial behaviour by putting more, more activities for, for teenagers and young children. Well, for little children there's like parks, but like for like teenagers, there's really anything like not a lot of stuff apart like from my boss and her because of all activities on there. We wanted to find out what a local resident thought. We have blurred the shot at her request. Well, I think they're just thoughtless, really. Probably it's not shown in the home how to respect other people. What do you think makes the children antisocial? I don't know really. I think if um, you know they they act the way they do because sometimes the older children tell the younger children what to do. The gangs on the estate. There was a fight and they ripped my fence up. We just paid a lot of money to have it done. And you get no respect from any of them if you speak to them. They just answer you with you know we, we live here. Am I any social? If I'm in a group, how does that captures what we wear? Why do people stop and stare? Why do we get the blame? Cause there's trouble everywhere. I don't know. I don't know. Too many people think that we are the bad ones judging us by our loves. Saying bad things about us. for people to kids to come and play on. Well, as you can see, there is just two swings not suitable for younger children and an A and a B. <laughs> Some people feel that when they see more than three or four children together that that is a gang. I suppose in a way it is and they may feel intimidated by it. Um, so I think if there was places for you all to go you wouldn't be you know, so clustered all together hanging around the shop and looking so intimidating. The condition of this park isn't really good for people to play on. There's a main road right next to it in case one of the younger kids decided to go run and chase after a ball. Um, they could end up dead. Oh, stop talking now. I'm <laughs> I think that a lot of children are misunderstood. 
There's a lot of angry children on this estate for one reason or another and um, they've got one parent who may be severely ill uh, with a drink problem, there's drug problems on the area. So I don't believe that half these children mean to be antisocial. They just uh, feel angry and lost. This is where we usually play football when it's wet. And the grass? The grass is too wet and muddy. And when the ball hits the fence, it breaks it, logs, sir. It breaks logs, sir. And then we have to go over to get it with the and vandal grease. As you can see, on your clothes, and it doesn't come off. We need more lighting on the area and more CCTV to make people feel safe and especially more police as we just said back there. We get, we get complaints, complaints because even though there's no ball game sign, they still complain because it's just, I don't know. The way it is, because it's, it's in our people's home. Because they're all people and they're just moaning all. Beep! <laughs> Give us a football pitch! Give us a football pitch! Please. A concrete one no. and a grass one. An Astro Tower football yeah. piece. Yeah. yeah, that's good. This is Van der Grace and it was put here two years ago and as you can see, it's still wet. This is to stop people playing football and it's leading up more. Does it work? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, most shoes like the good old days, the light to hang The police station was quite quiet till the phone rang Now it's the fifth time the phones rang For the same gang making the neighbours head bang Playing football on the neighbours rule, they've been told before Kick the ball over again and I'll pop it and stop it By this time the sergeant's had enough, he's off his rocket Send his constables down to put a plug in the socket And that's when it has both shoes, so don't knock it But to be fair, some dudes don't mind if it's used As long as it's appropriate and not abused Not used when the neighbours see fit and when they choose to prove to the use the adults have a final say in what they do If everybody took the time out We could all iron these fine lines out We don't need to shout By working together, um, coming together as a community, uh, listening to each other, that means younger people and old people, residents, listening to each other and then trying to do things about it. I just would like to say that there are good parents but there also are parents that don't give a damn where the kids are or what they're doing and if you go and confront the parent They'll bawl and shout at the child, say you're coming in, next thing you know they're out doing the same thing again. We could resolve some of these issues by, um, we have things in place at the minute like um, a section 30 dispersal which means if children congregate then the police are allowed to put them off, you know, move them on. I don't think that's really the answer. They need somewhere to go. I think a lot of it is to be with understanding and talking to the youths, meeting with them, uh, say myself and people like the, the Maypole Centre to explain how they're affecting the other residents uh, with their behaviour and getting them involved in activities. I mean we had our summer trips where we brought most of the families together and that was absolutely fantastic. Um, I think we need to do more fun things as well because I mean when you're living in an area like this it's too easy to think of the downsides. So, you know, we could do with a bit of fun every now and again, couldn't we? Somewhere that isn't supervised, that the children can, you know, meet uh, freely with shelter. What, what, somewhere which they can enjoy. What do you think about this area for the young people? Uh, what I think of this area is, wow, well, it's got nothing to do apart from going to the main pole centre. I don't think this area has got really much potential at the moment, but if this documentary hits the home where it's meant to, there should be a bit more and a lot more activities for young people and hopefully bring this area back up. I mean, I don't really think I'll stay in this area because, to be honest, <laughs> there's nothing much for anyone really to do. Oops! <laughs>
My Port Action Group have consulted the 150 young people about living in Druid Heath. Young people are finding themselves hanging round on the streets and not having a specific street, place or space to call their own. Being constantly moved on, but moved on to where? We don't want to be supervised all the time. We need our own space. I was getting to that! For God's sake, woman! <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, okay, okay, so okay, I'm filming. Just come a bit closer. Okay, a bit closer. A bit closer. There you go. Right. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? No, not the mid no, you can today. You can always go. <laughs> you can always go stand under the shelter and yeah. take pictures. Yeah, she's she's pretty cool, isn't she? Mm. They all have the look. I don't talk down to us like teachers do, sort of thing, they look. I just talk to you normally? Yeah. yeah they look. Not we talk to each other, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah.